Hey, buddy Mark Agnesi here again in the back room of Norman's Rare Guitars. Welcome back <laughs> to another episode of Guitar of the Day. Woo! Rosewood Telly still here. Whole bunch of calls still here. Shocked. But on another Beatle note, uh, Wednesday, right before we shut down, we did that casino. That one just bit the dust. That guitar was clean. Mm. Now it's clean and sold. <laughs> My favorite kind of guitars. Sold ones. Uh, we're going to skip Weird Ass Wednesday again this week just because I've got this influx of just rad ES guitars. <sighs> you guys need to see some of this stuff in lieu of the weirdness. So uh, for your Wednesday this week, I got something cool. Come on back. Check this out. Uh, this is from 1966. This is the original Epiphone E360 TDC Riviera. Original cherry red finish. With a couple of those mini humbucking pickups. And how could you forget the Frequencator tailpiece? Mm -hmm. This might be the second Riviera we've done. Um, so Lex Review. This is not the Epiphone that you see over at the uh, Guitar Center. It's a different Epiphone, all right? People still get caught up on this stuff. I say it every time we do one. I'll say it again. Epiphone's its own company all throughout the 30s, 40s, and early part of the 50s. Gibson's biggest competitor, really especially in the arch top game, as well as flat tops. Um, Epiphone started to lose some popularity, started losing some money, and in 57, they got sold. Gibson picked them up, and by 1958, Gibson started to release guitars under the Epiphone brand. Different than now, where Epiphone is this import company. These were made in Kalamazoo, Michigan, in the exact same factory, by the exact same people using the exact same materials that made the Gibson stuff. From 1958 to 1970, don't be afraid of Epiphone. After that, don't be afraid of it either. Just realize that's when it becomes an import brand. So this one's from 66. Um, the other thing we gotta talk about with the Epiphone thing, basically almost every Gibson model that they were doing in the line, Ted McCarty kind of designed an Epiphone equivalent to it. Uh, you see that a lot with the acoustics we've done, because we've done more of the acoustics than the Epiphone electrics, but you have the Gibson J45 or J50, you have the Epiphone Texan, you have the Hummingbird, you have the Eldorado, you have the Dove, you have the Frontier, the Caballero, the LGO, <laughs> the Cortez, LG, or B25. They did the same with the electrics. So the Riviera is basically the Epiphone version of the 335. Now, they also do a guitar called the Sheraton, which looks very similar, but with the gold parts, ebony board, basically the 355 appointments on an Epiphone guitar. That's the Sheraton. Um, but this is basically the equivalent of a 335. So we're going to have a laminated maple top, back, and sides. Um, beautiful grain on that neck. A little flamey maple neck as well. Um, rosewood fingerboard. You got the kind of uh, parallelogram inlays. Oh. I learned that. I remembered it too. Uh, once you get past 63 and the late 63, 64, we go to the elongated headstock. Up until then, they were still kind of the short, squatty, almost Gibson style headstock. Um, biggest differences on these, you're going to have the mini humbuckers instead of the big sized humbuckers. Really the biggest distinction on the Epiphone guitar between the Epis and the Gibbies. Um, so mini humbuckers. And then we have the Frequencator tailpiece, which you see on a lot of um, Epiphone guitars, as opposed to like the Gibson style trapeze where they're all across one bar. You have one set up for treble strings and one set up for bass strings. And these can actually push down or up to take off or add tension to the strings. You get that? So you want a little more tension on your bass strings, but you want it looser for bending. You can take a little bit of that off, whereas on like an ABR1 or something like that, it's all on one fixed point. Volume and tone for each pickup, three-way toggle switch. Of course, you have the E on the guard for Epiphone. Um, they're great guitars, man. Like I said, don't be scared of Epiphone guitars from the late 50s and all through the 60s. They're fantastic things. Oh man, it's just super red too. Most of these you'll see in Sunburst, but they did do Cherry, which I guess is the other thing we got to talk about. This is an E360 TDC. I don't know how many times I've given this speech, but some of you guys <laughs> don't watch every day. And then someone will go, what does TDC mean? Here you go. T, thin, thin body. Okay. Okay. Why? Because some models are offered in both a thick body and thin body varieties. Gibson ES-125 is a thick body guitar, then you have an ES-125T, it's a thin body. Redundant on these, they're all thin, 
but they put it anyway. D, dual pickup. Again, Ooh. all of these have two pickups, so it's dumb. But <laughs> a 175 is only a one pickup guitar, just up here in the neck. When most people think of a 175, they think of a 175D for the two pickups. So TD, thin, dual pickup. C is for cherry. That's it. Nothing after it. It's sunburst. N, natural, W, walnut. I don't think they really did any other <laughs> colors than that. So this one's the cherry one. Oh boy, epi gibbies. Let's go plug this thing in. Let's see what these mini humbuckers can do. All right, we're out front. We have the 1966 Apophone E360 TDC Riviera, original cherry finish. Today we're going through 410 Hot Rod DeVille. All the EQs at noon. Just a little bit of reverb. Start up on the neck pickup. See what this thing can do. up the amp let's go into the middle position got a combination of those two mini humbuckers working together let's see what we got there So let's go down. Bridge mini humbucking pickup all by itself. Wide F and open. Let's see what that thing can do here. Sixty-six original Epiphone E360 TDC Riviera original cherry finish frequencer tailpiece 
pair of Gibson made uh, mini humbucking pickups and of course you can't forget parallelogram inlays. There's your Wednesday for this week. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of Guitar of the Day. Until then, follow me on Instagram at, at Mark Agnesi. Follow the store at, at Norman's Rare Guitars. And check this and the rest of these guitars out online at normansrareguitars.com. We'll see you guys back here again. Another episode of Guitar of the Day tomorrow. Peace.